Facebook page. I go to my Facebook page. Yes. Indeed. It's coming on live now. Uh, just give it a second. So what do I do? So you share it. Once it goes live, there we are. I'm going to, to see if I can tag you. Yeah. So that we can share it because it's live now and you can then share it on your page as well. So you mean people will come on my page? Yes, on your Facebook page. Okay. You know, all my friends thought they were going to be joining the Zoom. Oh, okay, okay. okay. So I don't know how you're going to let them know. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll make an announcement now. Okay. Yeah. Are you trying to tag me? That's okay. You can take a minute just to send that message out. Join on the Facebook page. There are people already joining. Maybe allow them to join. I don't know. Uh, okay, let's just see. Just... Hello? So I've allowed him to join. Okay, we allow. Are we ready? Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> Dr. Bernard, I'm not sure if you can hear us, but you can also join via the Facebook Live page. So good evening, everybody, and a very warm welcome for, from a very, very hot Johannesburg, South Africa. Um, I'm thrilled to be here with you again this evening. It's been a while and I've missed my Facebook family. Um, with us this evening, uh, we have Tito Hanguma and Tito is a dear friend of the family and he is also the survivor of the genocide in, the Ru in Rwanda. He is the founder of Upskill Africa, working across the continent to unite children in skills. He is the founder of CFF that works with 35 countries and a social cohesion expert. Um, Tito is also the dad of four children and a husband and an elder at his local church as well. So welcome, Tito. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for having me tonight. On behalf of, of Succeed and on behalf of my partners, Richard and Patrick, we'd like to say a very warm welcome. Uh, we are privileged to have you on tonight. Thank you, thank you. Maybe to start by telling us a little bit about yourself and about um, what happened, you know, in the genocide of 94, what happened? Yeah, my, my name is Tito, Tio uh, Jen Haguma. I'm, uh, I'm, as you said, I'm a father of four children. Uh, beautiful children, lovely children, and uh, one wife, a happy family. I'm, I'm a child of God. So you asked me about what happened uh, in the Great Lake region. Uh, actually, when we talk about the Great Lake region, we talk about the dark time yeah. of that place. And I'm talking about uh, Burundi. I'm talking about DRC Congo yeah. and uh, Rwanda. I remember 
1990, I was a, a young teenager where the war started in Rwanda. It was all about uh, the refugees, yes. uh, Rwandese refugees that were in exile since uh, 1959 that wanted to come back home and they attacked Rwanda government of that time. So that's where a uh, war started. Many innocent Rwandese uh, were displaced and the others lost all their belongings and many lives perished that time. And uh, we go further in 1993, where in, uh, in Burundi, the first president, democratic elected president of Burundi was killed. And this president was killed. Oh, sorry. You can mute him. Yes. Um, I was talking about uh, uh, Burundi, where in 1993, the first democratic uh, uh, elected president of Burundi was killed and more than 400,000 innocent Burundians lost their lives and others ran away. That's yeah. why we have refugees all over in, in Africa, even here in South Africa from Burundi. And then we go further to 1994 yes. in Rwanda where uh, the two presidents were killed in the Rwandese presidential uh, uh, jet that was shot uh, down and the president of Rwanda of that time and the uh, new president of Burundi were killed in that crash, which was a trigger to what's happening in Rwanda, the genocide where more than 800,000 Rwandese were massacred, were killed. We're talking about the a genocide uh, of Tutsi in Rwanda. And we experienced more than 2 million Rwandese people who fled to the neighboring countries. And also we go further to 1996 up to 2000, where the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo was attacked by these militias, uh, rebels, and more than 12 million Congolese and uh, Rwandese refugees perished in the forest of Congo, what we know as UN mapping. So since 1990 to 2000, the Great Lake region, Burundi, Congo, and Rwanda was hell on earth. To, to summarize what, what is happening in the Great Lake region is that in the battles of two elephants, the ants are squashed. Yeah. And these two elephants are those outsiders, superpowers that are looking for the resources that the Great Lake region has and millions, millions of innocent Rwandese, Burundian, Congolese are perishing because of that. So in, in, in summary, that's what really happening in our region. And that's why we have asylum seekers, we have refugees, we have widows, we have orphans all over in Africa, even here in South Africa, these people are living with trauma, the trauma of the past of what happened to them, to their parents, to their siblings, and the trauma of the present, because most of them have no document, and these xenophobias, and the trauma of the future, because they don't see the future. Thank you. So, Tito, you, you've lived through so much of loss and so much of pain. 
And uh, there's a Japanese proverb that says, you know, you fall seven times, you stand up eight. Mm. And uh, that is also our, our family creed, you know, my family creed. Uh, but tell us about the times that you fell through all of this personally and how did you have to stand up? Yeah, I like that Proverbs because no matter what, you, you, you need to stand and continue. I fell many times. I fell when uh, the war started in my country and I was not able to continue my studies. I was still a young teenager in high school. I wanted to continue my studies, but when my studies stopped, it's wow. like I, I fell. I fell when my mother died in my, in my hands. And uh, I fell again when I heard the sad news that my father was shot dead. After just a few months, I also had a, I lost my three brothers and two sisters. So I fell many times. I fell when I became a, a foreigner, a refugee in Africa. Yeah. And I always fall down when there's xenophobia. Mm. But in Portuguese, they say, la luta continua. We don't have to give up. Yeah. Because if you give up, you won't make it. So this is the picture of this unjust world. So we need to be strong yeah. and continue. So that's how I keep going. Yeah. Thank you, Tito. Your, your courage is admirable. What you've lived through is, um, is nothing short of a miracle. And um, yeah. can you tell us maybe in a nutshell, maybe in five key points or five, you know, what advice, what helped you persevere? What advice would you give us to persevere through such dire circumstances? You know, many of us, Tito, are in lockdown and we're feeling very trapped. But lockdown is nothing compared mm. to the genocide that you went through, where the whole country just shuts down, you know? Um, so what, what, may, what helped you to persevere? What, are, what advice would you give us? I have a few advices that uh, I, I can share with you and that really helped me a lot. The first one, the first advice is to, to seek God first yes. and to pray. When all excuses of not praying are removed, we seek his face. He's the only one who don't change. He's the same in the valley and he's the same in the mountain. He's the same during the day and the night. People may change during the conflict and whatever that you consider as your hope may be destroyed. That's why you turn your face to God and seek him and pray during those times that's how we survived. The second oh. advice that I can share with you is to turn your face to the sun. Because when you look at the sun, all the shadows fall behind you. Yes. What does it mean? Because when days are dark, there are a lot of rumors, there are a lot of fear, but when you focus, and you focus with your mind, your positive mind, there's a hope. There's a hope and don't listen to bad leaders. Listen to good leaders because yeah. they are opportunists. When things are bad, there are those who want to divide. There are those who want to take advantage. Listen to good uh, uh, leaders. That's how to focus on the, on the light of the sun and avoid those who come to you to gossip with you. Because those who gossip with you, they will gossip about you too. The other advice is just to train our mind and our mouth to keep the kingdom perspective. 
our mind and our mouth because we are living in a period or in a time where social medias are feeding us like tsunami. They are feeding us a lot of fake news and we are confused. So we need to train our mind to focus on kingdom perspective. We need mm -hmm. to train our mind to focus on positive things, not yeah. to be attracted with different newspapers that are used by those who have, uh, I mean, benefit on all these conflicts. Mm -hmm. The last advice to people, especially here in South Africa, we, we like uh, Bray. <laughs> we, we stop braying. And those who like ocean, like in Durban, we are uh, at Indian Ocean, you know, we reduce our time at uh, surfing because we don't know how long this lockdown or the shutdown or these dark days, we don't know how long they will take. So we need to know how to spend little and to save a lot. Yeah. Wow, wow. So what a journey you've had. And tell me, now you work with some of the, um, a lot of committees, a lot of forums where you do social cohesion work, where you do reconciliation work. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, I work with uh, Zoe Life. Yeah. Zoe Life is not an ordinary NGO. Zoe Life is a, a tool for social, uh, uh, social transformation. So in Zoe Life, uh, we are running a social cohesion project where we, 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 we run dialogues, where we do uh, peace buildings in the community, workshops, conflict management. So we've been uh, in different places uh, where uh, refugees, asylum seekers, and local people are together. We just create a safe place where unsafe issues are, are, are spoken. I've been invited in different church event and uh, Christian ministry event as a panelist, talking about peace and reconciliation, different high schools in KwaZulu-Natal and universities. I've been in, in Mozambique. Uh, I've been, I did facilitate church unity dialogues among churches in Mozambique. And um, I can't count how many social cohesion pro uh, workshops that I've been in. And also a lot of interview with radios, with TVs, like SABCs on, uh, yes. And uh, in 2016, I, I've been with a, a, a huge group of South Africans who went to New York in what we call Movement Day. Movement Day also, it's, it's a platform that put together faith leaders, business people, and community leaders for the sake of the cities, the big cities all over in the world. So I've been all over as a peace builder, as a, an ambassador of peace and reconciliation. Wonderful, wonderful. It's amazing how God has turned that around and that you are able to, to give him glory in the midst of all of this, you know, and to serve him yes. with your life. Yeah, mm. that's wonderful. But it wasn't always that easy, Tito. So tell us a little bit about your first job in South Africa. Yeah, it wasn't <laughs> easy, you know, being in a foreign land and being a refugee, uh, not only me, I'm speaking on behalf of all these uh, hundreds and hundreds of refugees in, in South Africa. There is a say that say that before you score, you must have a goal. So I think my first job was to sit down and think about how I'm gonna survive in this country and set a goal ahead. So my goal was I have to go back to school and I have to try my best to have a good family because my father has a peaceful family and myself, yeah. I wanted to have the same family as the family where I grew up. So my first job because of the goal that I set ahead of me was to do anything that can give me money. 
So my first job was to go to people houses and, uh, and work in their gardens. And my secret was to save more than what I earn. So, and from there, I opened a small saloon and start cutting hair in the saloon. And uh, I didn't wait for people to promote me. I was promoting myself. I was promoting myself because I was focusing on my target and my vision that one day I'll be able to go back to school because I didn't finish my studies. So yeah. that's how I kept going for level one to level two, I mean, step steps by using whatever I was saving from the job that I was doing. So after that, I had enough money to go and learn these home appliance repairing, how to fix stoves, fridge, microwaves, and other things. And then uh, I started doing that. And it's during that time that uh, I, I met my wife, Lillian, and I, I married Lillian. And we worked together till when she was able to, to, to go back to school also and finish her studies. When she finished and she got a job, uh, now my goal was reached. So I went back to school also. Wow. So tell us, I mean, you've met Lillian. Uh, uh, you kind of starting out a young man in a foreign country. H how did that all work out that you, she ended up your wife, your beautiful wife? So I was lonely in, in, in Durban, a young guy, 26 years old, trying to survive till when, I can say that it was a miracle, till when I, see, I saw this young lady and uh, I was attracted by her simple life, how humble she was. I'm a kind of person who like humble people. I didn't ask her about her background, about her level of, of, of studies, about whatever. Just I was attracted by her heart. Young lady, Christian, humble lady. And I say, this one may be the one. So I remember when I approached her to propose her, I told her that, I have nothing. I only have God. I only have Christ in me. And I was surprised by her answer. Because she said, if you have Christ in you, you have everything. So <laughs> that's how we, 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 we started our life and uh, we got married. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. That really is amazing. Because um, she just, she, she found um, God in you. And, and that's what brought you together. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. That's absolutely yeah. wonderful. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> she must be one remarkable woman. Man must be one remarkable woman. Um, so tell us, what, um, what is the one message that you would like to share with us? And, and maybe just you know, elaborate a little bit about it. Just tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah, the, the message that I always carry within me is to tell people that we were all created to complete each other, not to compete against each other. If people can know that, we will live in harmony and we will build this world to a better place for everybody mm -hmm. to enjoy. So we have different skills and we have different gifts, but we need each other. We need each other. You know, God, when God created this world and put us there, he put all the resources that we need. People are poor because there are those who have a lot and who don't want to share. People are poor because they are those who use them as slaves. But if we can understand that we are all equal in the eyes of our creator and treat each other equally. Yeah. And if you can see that we have different gifts and skills and that we need each other, we can live in harmony. I always tell people that paradise is good, but it is not good to live in a paradise alone. If your neighbor is hungry, don't complain when he will come and break your doors and get inside. 
it's because you are full and he's hungry. People need to understand that sharing is caring. Let's help each other. Let's uplift those that are down there yeah. so that they can also enjoy life. Hey, teacher, I know we didn't go through this, but I'm curious to know, you know, how did you get through the trauma, the, the trauma of, of having lived through the genocide? To speak out, to share your story with other people help a lot because I, have been, I saw a lot in Rwanda, in Congo, even here in South Africa. When there's xenophobia, it just brings back the, 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 the picture of the life that I've been in for so many years. Yeah. But building friendship with people, have time and share stories. There's power in sharing stories. So sharing stories with others, it's part of healing. Yeah, because, I think, yeah, sorry. Mm, yeah, I was because? saying that because when you keep within you what happened to you, it burst inside and the, you carry the burdens alone. But when you share with others, it really helps. And another thing yeah. is to change the, the story, to change the story in which way? Because yeah. there's always a light even in the darkness. So we don't have to focus or to fight the darkness, but we have to, 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 to light the candle. Yeah. What yeah. do I mean? I don't repeat what happened always, yes. but I speak about peace and hope for the future. It does help me. So I don't focus on darkness that took place in, in our countries. I focus on the candles that we can light for peace. Yeah, and it reminds me of the verse Romans 8, 28, you know, where we mm. speak about uh, God works together all things for good to those who love him and are called Amen. according to his purpose. Amen. Amen. And, and, and what you said now, there's just so many nuggets in it, teacher, because there's so much power in story. And when mm. you can tell your story and change the narrative of that story, then that story has no power over you because your healing mm. has you know, your healing has come. So yes. well done, well done. It's not easy. It's not an easy it, time. It, it is not, but it's possible. It is possible. It is possible. Yes. God, all things are possible also. Yes. Tell us about, um, you're an elder and a leader at the 3C Church. At, where is the church? In Westville? In, in Durban? Yeah, uh, 3C Church is in Westville. Which one is like between Westville, Chesterville, if you know the place? Yes. And uh, I, I'm part of Tracy Church. And uh, Tracy Church is not a white church or Indian church or black church. Tracy Church is a multiracial church, multicultural church, and multinational church. And wow. that's the spirit in Tracy is a church that unites people. Yes. We talk about unity. We talk about building our community and our society. We talk about justice. We believe that our God is a God of justice. That's why at Tracy Church, we are between the city of West V, the community of Chester V, even the campus of West V. You will see people from all those three corners gathering together. And uh, another thing I uh, can add, like message I can give about church. Uh, church for us is, is from Monday to Saturday. It's like playing soccer. In soccer, you play 45 minutes and then you have 15 minutes to rest and then you play again 45 minutes. So for us, church is from Monday in our community, in our workplace, from our, our home, our families, we reflect Jesus Christ. And then Sunday, we meet to, to fellowship and to share testimonies of what the Holy Spirit have been da doing in our lives during the week. And then that Sunday, that 15 minute where the coach, we coach us again and bless us 
to go again and do church during the whole week. So serving God is not Sunday, it's everyday life. So I think that's the message as an elder that I can share with you. Thank you. That's wonderful. And a special thanks also to Anusha Tietchi from your church who connected us. So it's because of her that you're on on, uh, on Seeds of Hope today. Yes, she said you yes. so got to meet him. And, and uh, it's such a privilege, really, to, to have met you. I also wanted to ask you, you know, you have three daughters and a son. Um, if there's anything that you want to see changed in this world for them, what would it be? Pardon? What what would you, what 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 would make the world a better place for your children for your four children? Uh, to put God first. Yeah. There is this story uh, about these young men who was driving a Mercedes Benz, and uh, it wasn't starting. It's just a story that helps to understand. And this old man was just walking around. He stopped today, he told the guy, your car is not starting. And there is a small screw under your, your, your starter. Just tight it, just tight it. So these young men look at these old men and say, what do you know about this? Yes. And the old man took out his, his ID card and showed him, guess what? On the ID card, his surname is Benz. And he said, <laughs> Our family is the one that built Mercedes Benz. Yes. So to make this world a better place for my children and for the future generation is to go back to the creator. There's a manual. Yeah. A book, the Bible. There's no other way we can make this world better if we don't go back to our creator mm. and speak to him and understand why he created us. Because he gave us a mission. He gave Adam and Eve mission, go and multiply and rule the world. So we are here to multiply, but to take care of this world, not to destroy it. Even Jesus said it, that we are the light of the world and we are the salt of this earth. Yes. We are the light because we need to speak justice. We need to speak peace. We need to speak harmony and unity against the secular system that divides people. And also we are the salt of this earth. We need to look after our neighborhood, our house, our gardens, our oceans, our environment. That's it. Mm. Thank you. That's wonderful. That's absolutely wonderful. I wanted to ask you, um, you, speak, you spoke to us about so many things and you are definitely the salt of the earth, you know, sharing your story. Um, going forward, you know, what is your message for men in this world? Because there's been so much, especially in South Africa, but globally, there's been so much of evil, so much of violence against women. Um, what is your message to men though? It's a simple message that we were all created equal yeah. in the eyes of our creator, men and the women, we are equal in the eyes of our creator, but we are not the same in the sense of we're created to complete each other. Mm. And uh, the women that we are abusing, they are our mothers who carried us nine months mm. and who breastfed fed us and who made us the men we are. They are our sisters, they are our daughters, they are our grandmothers. Let us not take advantage of what different cultures created of men superior to, to, to women. Or is the same when we say like white are superior to black. 
That's not true. We are all equal. So men and women are equals. Let's treat our, our sisters very well because if we maltreat them, we are maltreating ourselves. It's not true. Okay. If we treat women, we're mistreating ourselves. That is so powerful, Tito. And you know, one of the things we do at Seeds of Hope and Succeed is that um, we look after the um, basic health, you know, feminine hygiene of women yes. and girls with a reusable uh, sanitary towel that lasts up to five years. And, mm. you know, the reason that we do this reusable, it's good for the earth, but also because we believe that if a girl is making a choice between buying a sanitary towel and buying a loaf of bread, that is a violent choice. In this mm. day and age, that should not be something that you have to choose. You know, with all the technology, with all the advancements, we're still having this happen. And so we want to get this into the girls' hands. If you are aware of any organizations or anybody that would like to get involved, please just send us an inbox or leave us a comment on this. Thank you so much, teacher, for, for sharing um, such, pow such powerful messages today um, on, uh, on Seeds of Hope. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for looking after our sisters. We have thousands and thousands of refugees, yes. uh, women who are jobless, uh, refugees, young ladies who are just sitting with no income, nothing. And there are a lot of men who take advantage yes. because they are suffering. Please, whatever you do, remember them. I would like also to leave this uh, number if you want to know more about refugees. And these numbers that I'm going to give to you doesn't cost you anything. I mean, for those who are in South Africa, you just dial 134, st sorry, yes. star 134, star 532, star 301H. Let me repeat, star 134, star 532, star 301H, and you follow the instruction to yes. show you, uh, tell us about who is your neighbor, who is a refugee, who is an asylum seeker, who is a stateless, and a lot of different uh, UNHCR partners in KwaZulu-Natal that help refugees. And from there, you can also see how you can contribute toward these people. Remember the Bible tells us to look after refugees because we were once refugees also in, and we are all foreigners in this land. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, teacher. Thank you so much for your time and for your, for your expertise. Um, is there anything that else that you would like to share with us? We do have some time. Um, is there anything on your heart that you would like to share with us this evening? Yeah, we are still in uh, lockdown Stop. level one. Yes. A lot of people are just uh, playing with COVID-19. This COVID-19 is there and is killing people. Yeah. We need to look after ourselves. And also, I have this booklet here. Yeah? I wish it can go to every person. It's from my uh, uh, organization, our organization, Zoe Life. Yes. Talking about the key information about COVID-19, but it's not only about COVID-19, it's about all the enemies our, of our bodies, all the viruses, how we can go back to our ordinal organic food to boost our immune system. We have everything in our reach. We have natural food that we can use, we can eat to boost our immune system. So with that number that I gave you, also you will go through and it will be talking about how to boost our immune system. COVID-19 is there but yeah. our immune system can fight it if we look after ourselves and eat healthy food. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you, Gita, for that. And it's a very important, inf very important information because South Africa is now beginning to go through its spike and we will need to expect a spike. So please yeah. do be careful. It's not over. Look after yourselves, but also look after your neighbors. Look after those impacted by, uh, yeah. by COVID, who've lost loved ones, who've um, actually lost jobs and who may be struggling through this time. Um, keep an eye out and look out for people who, who need help. Need help. Be, that, be that seed of hope in somebody's life. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank and, you, Tita. Yeah. And on behalf of um, Succeed and, and uh, Richard Maestri and myself, I'd just like to say thank you so much for your time. Thank you for coming through and chatting to us. Um, your story is inspiring, but your life itself is, in, in, you know, I, I wrote this week, it says, um, you, you teach what you know, but you impart who you are. So thank you for imparting who you are today with us. It's been an absolute privilege and we honor you for your journey and for the work that God has done in your life. Thank you so much, Tito. Thank you too for hosting me. And with that, we'd like to say a very warm good evening to everybody. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Stay safe and um, may God make, make his face to shine upon you. Uh, may hope light your way and may you be blessed in everything that you do. God bless you and good evening. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. Yeah. Thank you.